everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Nuno. Hello. Hi, Chris. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. And so, folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? So, I'm Nuno do Carmo. I'm a Portuguese living out in Switzerland, smaller country. <laughs> and as you can maybe tell here, I work for a company named Suza. Uh, the Linux SUSE, but on the cloud native branch, which is uh, the Acquire Rancher uh, company. And I'm I, a tech writer, sorry. Yeah. Oh, tech writer. Yeah. It, it's, uh, no, it's, it's great. This, you, you are so far out of my world. So I'm interested in, in learning ab about that. Um, we're just, I, so I always like to ask, I like to know people's origin story. Like what was your path to becoming an MVP? We were, we were just talking before we hit record a little bit about that, but why don't you give like the whole story of how you found out about the program got involved? Right. So, uh, very short or very short story before it's, it, I got involved. Uh, I always loved Microsoft. So I'm uh, a Microsoft person really by heart uh i got i worked in eldest um field services and so on always in the microsoft side until i reached hp uh, where we were acquired a small company and we were acquired by them and uh i went to be a unix administrator and there i learned a little bit about uh, linux and mainly unix hp ux solaris and uh, what will make the bridge now to where the discussion started is that uh, by then, it was 2008, uh, I had to deep dive kind of into virtualization, not really Hyper-V, back then still uh, on the desktop at least, mm -hmm. but uh, because I had to understand or learn about like Linux and Unix. And I wished back then Sorry, it's a lot of back then, but back then I wish that we had something as like WSL. Fast forward now, WSL arrived 2016-ish, uh, V1, totally fall in love. Uh, the community started very fast also around it. Other passionate, uh, people that I now I can call friends. And uh, in 2009, 2020, I became an uh, insider MVP first. Mm -hmm. And uh, 2020, COVID happens. Uh, 2021, I become an MVP. And I have my second year of insider, but I, I'm focusing a lot into WSL2. And mainly, so for the ones who know the plushies around me, around cloud native mainly uh into wsl so i try to bring the dockers the kubernetes the workloads whatever you have into um wsl2 if possible blog about it and then publish it and do some talks even uh from time to time into the cloud native space um with that going through then uh 2021 2022 23 now and 24 going on I became a full-time Microsoft MVP. I'm no more an insider MVP. Uh, saddens me a little bit, but uh, when Microsoft split out WSL as a feature from WSL as now an App Store package, mm -hmm. my need to be in the, let's say, the insider rings uh, were less and less, uh, let's say, present, I would say. Yeah. I would say it's not true. I have I have some insider machines still working here, but yeah. it's like the 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 insider MVP at least didn't so double sell as part of it. But the Microsoft development MVP, which is the the one I am now, uh, is part of it. So 2020, uh, it was thanks to someone called Aiden Barnes, uh, my friend. It was he was my manager also for, uh, at Suze. Uh, for some time, um, we built the the community, but he was really like the is still like the really person in the front uh, forefront of the the community. 
<laughs> the go-to person uh, kind of. And like him, we were always like the Microsoft persons of the Linux world kind of. Yeah. So it's always fin funny. But uh, yeah, no, thanks to him, he opened quite a lot of doors. And of course, WSL became more present. WSL2 became even bigger because now people were really being able to use it in a company thanks to the micro VM part, let's say, but uh, other people mm -hmm. at Microsoft uh, suddenly contacted us and that's how we got named as MVPs. Well, I know that, uh, well, going back to, um, um, I, I was just thinking when they, they just, for folks that don't know, they just rebuilt and relaunched the mvp.microsoft.com site True. where you collect and they've instead of it being a separate site for the regional directors you can also search and find rds that are there as well as student ambassadors my first question is like why are the windows insiders mvps not also on that site uh, you oh, know well, i know okay. it's just it's a different thing it's a different program maybe that's it maybe it's just run by a different organization entirely and so they don't have it in there but uh i think yeah is, is there any it, reason why you can't maintain both of those like i honestly again uh, yeah because uh, insiders is, is a lot like i'm really blogging about double sl uh getting back to the team mainly on twitter potentially, but with IDs, with bugs that I could face, or I'm helping companies or projects to get into WSL also by writing articles for them and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So when WSL was part of uh, Win Windows Insiders channels only, they, to, to find a place for us WSL, let's say fans, they found kind of that page. But then I think WSL became finally the rightful standalone right uh, yeah exactly yep. so now it's more development itself so to yep. get back nowadays i think like everyone that will get back to want to get back to uh, windows insiders mvps there's a lot happening into the dev own uh, initiative recently and mm -hmm. uh, and projects that they have and i think that's the right place i'll continue a lot into more the wsl part because that's where that's my niche yeah but uh, I, I know yeah. that you know you know going back historically to the microsoft marquee event so ignite inspire and build there's always been a heavy push by the windows org to get people yeah. to join the insiders program i joined years ago as a member never was an insider mvp um, but was part right. of that and got the communications and different calls and, and access. So, so that's just something for, I always like, cause people always ask the questions and I'm sure you've been an MVP mm. long enough that I'm sure you've had a number of people that have reached out. Like, how did you become an MVP? Like how, how yeah. could I become an MVP and talk to people or formally mentor them sure. around that? Um, but this is just, it's another option is the windows insiders program. True. Um, I mean, there's a number of ways that you can get plugged into Microsoft communities. I mean, as an, I work for an ISV, and so mm -hmm. we're in various TAP programs and other things that are NDA, and certain number of employees are active within kind of those circles. Right. Um, but as an individual, Windows Insiders is a great way to get involved. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I mean, like, it, it, it's funny enough when you say, like, okay, I'm providing a feedback. I'm providing an ID to the team, to Microsoft. I, and now I'm not, ex let's say, talking about any app developer. We are talking about one of the biggest in the world. Mm -hmm. And suddenly you are providing an ID as an insider because you are, let's say, working in the future, kind of. That's how I, uh, that's why I, I, I like the insiders because for me it was like, okay, people will know about this feature in months to come and I'm using it today. So I'm kind of like yeah. in the future already. But the thing is like, by providing that ID sometimes because they do listen, that's the, that's really the thing that I, uh, I always try to explain to people that are, let's say I, I come from the, I'm in the Linux world, right? So Microsoft is maybe not the, the best friend they have there. Uh, but what I can tell today, at least the Microsoft of today, it's not the Microsoft of early. Oh, it's 2000s. changed a lot. Yeah, no, I, I know. What well, look, okay. I was there twelve years ago, and oh. it was just starting to open up 
into the right. open source world. And I know some of the people, some of the executives mm -hmm. that were really pushing Satya Nadella was one of those people that was when he yeah. was over in the, uh, the live organization, he was a huge advocate for the open source and, and, and building up around cause Microsoft had killed like the Macintosh business unit, the Mac mm. uh, for a while was in the same building was a couple floors down from me. Uh, and they killed mm -hmm. that while still supporting the products. And he advocated for expanding that. So oh. open source Mac and kind of integration with other nice. third party platforms. So you've seen a lot of those partnerships grow with SAP, with Adobe, with uh, with Oracle, with others. Wow. And that that's what that that's a very good point. And thank you. That's why I said like I really like to have like insights from people that knew also the past because what I tend to tell people nowadays is like Microsoft changed leadership, but please don't think that Microsoft changed and now it's open source like friendly. It was always open source friendly, but the management at some point in time will block it. But the people that created WSL are people that were working for Microsoft since long ago. People that are now working potentially on the GitHub uh, division, people that are making other tools, uh, the Power Toys, uh, they were working already there. The Scott Anselman is there like for 20 years plus, right? right? Yep. And it's a great advocate for open source and developers, yep. right? But they were already working there. The problem was not the people at the end of the day. is like certain strategies or management were like blocking it. But yeah. with Satya right. that came in, and now we have someone that really like leading, you do want to do open source? Please go ahead yeah. and promote it. Not just stop there, promote it. Yeah. And now it's like, oh, wow, Microsoft is, uh, there's new people. No, it's, yes, there's new people, but there's a lot that were already there and they wanted just to be as open as they are today. Right. Well, I, I like, and it's a very close parallel to, the, just the community in general. Sure. Uh, and you had a lot of people that pushed back around the community activities and being, I mean, it was very refreshing a few years back where uh, your know, one senior executive said, look, we want to be as open as possible. And we want to err on the side of being, you know, too open and sharing with the MVPs and the RDs mm -hmm. and, and the, the people under NDA and getting that, that feedback about, and, and, and they changed product direction. I mean, we had a direct impact on mm -hmm. products, on features. Yes. Um, and that still, well, it, you know, it, and that it, it kind of ebbs and flows. It, it opens, it tightens around certain things. Um, but for the most part, you're, you're right. I mean, we we do have a voice as MVPs. Customers and partners also have a voice in there. It's different products, different uh, you know uh, leaders within Microsoft um, have different levels of impact. There are some leaders that are very open and listening and receptive to mm -hmm. anyone. Like I, I I know executives that answer questions directly on Twitter. True, you know, and that's that that's my that's my workplace. Let's say for for community work, it's really like I, I'm still mainly on Twitter slash X, whatever you want to yeah. call it. But uh, uh, Twix, I heard somebody yeah, yesterday was Twix. calling it Twix. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but the the thing is like uh, I met several person, like I met visually, right? But I met several persons, especially the WSL team, there on Twitter, and we were like talking back and forth, uh, tweeting, answering, testing on my side, doing blogs is great. It's mm, wait at the very beginning. It was like, okay, we, it's not meant for to do that, but now it evolves so much that, yeah, you, you see someone like uh, another person from the community, I think is insider still, but by, by far, he will be a MVP one day is Jeremy, uh, the windows on arm, uh, let's say for me is the um, Windows on ARM person go to. Uh, there's a lot of uh, people on Microsoft that uh, also ask him to test things and stuff like that. I'll get the full name. So Jeremy, sorry if I forgot. Yeah, the that, that's the kind of thing where yeah, it, you you ask you're like, has anybody ever submitted his name? You know, it might be his 
but so it was submitted. That? So yeah, so now it's like Windows on ARM and Windows on ARM is kind of insider-ish still. Mm -hmm. So is on the insider, but the, it, it will be like WSL. The moment Windows on ARM gets like fully released and is no more just an insider channel, it will be an MVP. Is I mean, is the go-to. It tries right. thing, it shares thing. And that's the most important part. Independent of any MVP that that I know, I don't know, I just know a few. That's what we were discussing just before also, but I don't know that much. But the ones that I know, and now thanks, uh, I know you, it's like, it's exactly the same. We do share our knowledge. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to share. You have to start mm -hmm. at some point. It will grow. It might not come from one day to another. Like, again, like I said, I became MVP 2000, uh, 2020, like just after COVID. But I started playing with WSL in 2016, writing blogs in 2016, starting to speak about WSL in 2016, right? Four years. Mm -hmm. That's what it took. Just because the program was not acknowledged, like WSL was still not acknowledged, you never know. But at least I started at some point. Yeah. Right? Well and and the other thing i thought you were going to go this direction too is like one one thing is that you know we definitely want to share for this is a great advice for anyone that's interested if you're active in the community which is it's a key you have to be active somewhere yeah. within the community you don't have to be speaking at conferences around the world well you know microsoft loves that but you don't have to do that there mm -hmm. are mvps i say this all the time there are mvps that they never do anything with their face up on the screen they are behind i know two that all they do are the uh, uh, they're they're out on um, Microsoft Tech Community answering questions, uh, or they're out on some other forums, and so that's that's forum work is still that's kind of talk about going back when the program was started in like ninety two ninety three that's kind of all that there was was you were writing a book or you were in a forum, that was kind of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that True. now there's so many different ways that you can contribute, but yeah, if you're looking to get involved, like uh, start by going into Microsoft tech community or any of these other forums, I have a, uh, Hey, get involved with techie gurus, which I'm on the board for, um, write content for us there, but, um, and just start answering questions. Um, I, I know people that just make it part of their daily habit to log in the morning as we sit and we go through email first thing in the morning, they take 15, 20 minutes and they go look at the forums and try to answer one question. And if you make that part of your daily habit, that yeah. adds up very quickly. And Microsoft watches those forums very closely. Yeah. And that's a very, very good point because what I, I try to say to all the potentially community, uh, let's say, ambassadorships or MVPs that I'm part of, but it's more like not that many, but I'm part of others. It's like MVP recognize what you have done across the year. Like if it's your first time, it's what have you done since when you started? Right. Was it like, and the, the great, uh, the great advice that you gave is like, if you start doing something that it's potentially daily or at least weekly, instruct yourself learn about like your domain is it new things how can you share that how can you share even local meetups they are recognized by for the mvp program so do your stuff and then you will get recognized but something that i some work it's it works for some but at least for me what i always tell is like be yourself share microsoft or other programs will recognize you but don't do something just thinking okay i want to be mvp and once you are an mvp because the way that you worked or you put your work on was just for this one timer that's why suddenly you have some drops into mvps the first year because like you said you didn't have this let's say ethics of just being yourself and sharing so if you want to be like one year two years i am four years i see at least six on your walls, so I'm, it means I'm that you are 12, 12 time. Yeah. 12 time. It's not happening by chance. It's because you are putting your work on and you are just, let's say being, uh, being like a, a good person in the community because you are sharing and Microsoft 
we recognize that. Yeah. Well, it, uh, uh, agreed. I think one of the difficult things for most people, and it was difficult for me for years too, is then keeping track of the things that you were. And it sounds yeah. like, hey, you're like you're ringing your own bell. Like I, I you know, and, and I have the jokingly, I have a tag on my blog uh, uh, that is uh, blatant self promotion is the tag. And I, and I label stuff around that where, nice. um, where there's not an obvious category, but I, I want to talk about, Hey, for the next quarter, here's the events I'm going to go speak at. Here's links right. to them. I'll do that. And I'll tag it as blatant self-promotion. But what I actually do is I catalog everything in a monthly blog post of everything I've written, everything I've spoken, everything I've presented, everything I've nice. created around there. And, and some people look at it as just like, Oh, oh Hey, look at all the, look at me. It's like, no, well, one it's good to keep track of that but two especially if you're trying to become an mvp i mean you you need to at some point you get your name submitted and for a short while there was a where you could self uh, uh submit your your name or or a non so now it needs to be a hmm. microsoft employee or an mvp uh or an rd uh that can submit you but um you then need to the first thing you have to do is fill out the survey which includes like, what have you done over the last year, the last 12 months? Yeah. And, and that's a good point. Like we can, we can now, let's say uh, I was still in the, I needed some Microsoft, like 2020, I think it was still need some Microsoft sponsorship, like employee sponsorship. Hopefully we had like the whole open source and WSL. So it was Aiden myself in 2020 then we had uh lucy that joined us also from wsl perspective and we still have like couple ones that we are trying to to get through also into the mvp but see like we are small uh, like like mvp microsoft is not the niche per se right but the cloud native is big but it's still quite a niche right mm -hmm. and then we have WSL inside of that it's still even more niche but at the end of the day the moment that one person in this case it was Aiden if one person can break through in your community and again you are working with these persons you are sharing knowledge and stuff like that they will mm -hmm. help you that's how the community of MVP at least works and yeah. that's really what I'm really mm -hmm. uh, like say proud to be part of first but then really glad that I'm here because I can meet other people that are just helping. Yep. No, agreed. It's uh well, I mean, it's a great community. Again, you still have to put in the effort. You still have to True. do True. things, but it's the, the more that you can make those things that are eligible as contributions, just part of the regular, your habits, the way that you work. I mean, I, I, I say this all the time, which is look, the things that I do, uh, that that got me into the program, I would do regardless of the program. I wasn't doing them to become an MVP. I was doing them because, uh, uh, you know, I'm a networking guy. I like exactly. meeting people, interviewing people, talking to people, learning about tech. I'm really passionate about this space. I'm also a Microsoft tech guy. Going back to, I, I, I'm trying to remember the year, 92, I think, where I... Wow paid a lot of money to buy a machine to load 3.1 windows 3.1 i had i had a 28640 i had to buy pay like 800 bucks for the expanded uh, uh, wow. uh memory to be able to load windows um wow wow, wow. but nice. uh, yeah but yeah but i mean and, and that's that's one that's one thing that's like People around Microsoft, like I consider like, and that's why that's in my Twitter bio. I'm a Microsoft fan, like literally. And I'm I'm not shocked to say it, even though where I work right now, because people like my colleagues, they don't have any judgment around Microsoft. They even like they they know that okay, they have some question, they can come ask me actually. Mm -hmm. And Suze is uh, self promotion, sorry, but it's like yeah, uh, Suze is just working like closely also with Microsoft into into the enterprise markets in the Azure markets, right? Yeah. So we are there. We are all partners. And sometimes people don't like if you if you just look the the person's debates kind of, you are missing the big picture. The big picture at the end of the day is like we are all in tech. Tech is no more a niche, but tech is small. 
-hmm. everyone or every big company knows every big company kind of. So at the end of the day, be friendly to everyone. Believe me, you will just earn much more than just going like, oh, okay, oh, you are a Microsoft, oh, you are a Linux, oh, you are a Mac. Okay, whatsoever. We don't care. It's like we are all in this same community. Yeah. Well, that that that's always true. I, I think uh, whether you believe in karma or not, or not, you know, that's the that idea of uh, treat people well, and you know, they'll treat you well, and yeah, I, I, yeah, I agree with kind. you. Yep. Be kind. Well, you know, I really appreciate your time today. And, and uh, you, as Thank you've mentioned, you. you're very active out on, on Twitter. So we'll make sure yeah. we we'll have all of your, your handle that's out there. Um, your, your blog, your company site, all that within the profile. So I uh, really appreciate your time today yeah. and nice to meet you again. Yeah. Thank you for having me and great, great initiative and initiative since years now, but uh, like, I really like your format, your efforts. So, Please keep doing it and I will be learning about other MVPs for sure. And hopefully we'll see you next spring at the next uh, MVP summit. Yeah, uh, that's one of my missions is to go to Redmond. So you need to go. It's, it is the best perk about being an MVP. It's just, you can't replace the the meetings, yeah. the connections you make at that event. So, so hopefully so look, next looking year. Looking forward to it. Yeah, definitely. Meet you there. Wow. Wow.